Hey, thank you so much for joining me for this very special update of the VR mocap project. I've got a new update in that allows you to motion capture any skeletal mesh. Although there are a few issues, uh, primarily crashing. So I've got a few steps that will limit crashing, but as you'll see in this video, particularly the later part of this video, there it's unavoidable. But um, if you can stomach that, uh, here's how you do it. So let's make a new character. Uh, today I want to become a goblin because that is my spirit animal. So we got this cool goblin bomber. I'm going to make a new blueprint class, which is just going to be an actor. Call him Goblin BP. Okay, so here we got just a blank blueprint. I'm going to drag in the goblin I want to be. So that's our skeletal mesh here. I'm going to rotate it negative 90 so that it's facing in the X direction. There we go. I'm going to add a mocap actor component. So that's the special mocap actor component that comes with the VR mocap project. I'm going to make sure it's the mocap target and this rig type here, unknown. So that's uh, actually, I'll go over it really quickly before we kind of delve too deep into things. Um, just going to open up the player pawn. So when you calibrate, which is right here, the calibration action, it's going to look for what type of profile it is, and it's going to actually change how it calibrates depending on that. So in this system, it looks kind of complicated from, from bird's eye, but it's quite simple. What it's going to do is it's going to look to see if you've actually put in a name for each tracker. If it's not, it's going to omit it, but that's going to give it a kind of a pool of trackers. And then it's going to look through um, a list of bone names, if there are bone names, and try to find what tracker is closest to that bone name. And if it doesn't find any, it's going to basically say, okay, well, what bone that's not named or not uh, kind of predetermined am I closest to, if you haven't already specified. And then it basically just sets kind of a mapping of this tracker equals this bone, which is going to send that translation data to uh, basically a control rig. Um, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. Um, typically with the system, this would be all that you'd have to do. You just enter in you know, the uh, animation blueprint for the skeletal mesh, because in Unreal, every skeletal mesh that's unique, yeah, or every skeleton rather that's unique, needs an animation blueprint. Um, what we're going to have to do in the system, so this is a special extra step, is we're going to have to go into the VR mocap project here. I'm going to look into animation blueprints. We've got this unknown animation blueprint here. We're going to have to right click and retarget this. So it's going to duplicate that animation blueprint and basically reform it to another skeleton. Um, so we're going to want to show, click uh, on this checkbox that says show only compatible skeletons. We want to see all the skeletons in our project. I'm going to search for goblin. That's right. looks good to me. I'm going to retarget. So that kind of uh, in the root of the content uh, will make just an animation blueprint here. I'm going to name it um, goblin so it's easier to find. Maybe, maybe unknown goblin. Great. So I'm just going to open up this again. So we have our uh, kind of skeletal mesh selected here. We're going to want to, under animation, find that goblin. So there we go, VR mocap unknown goblin animation blueprint. And let's actually, um, well, I'm going to save because it might crash. It's good practice to save. I'm going to open up that animation blueprint. So I'm going to go to the animation graph and I'm going to kind of double click into this control rig here. So there's actually two control rigs. One is for the body, and then this control rig is for the fingers. So let's go over the body one first. What you're going to want to do is delete the whatever skeleton is currently in there, go import hierarchy, and select the goblin skeletal mesh. So this is the same skeleton that we're going to be motion capturing. So basically, you can see here the bones changed. There's a preview mesh from another monster. Don't worry about the preview mesh. That's just in case you want to debug things. Um, just having the actual skeleton hierarchy in here uh, is what's important. So there is another important component for the full body IK node inside of Control Rig, and that is what is the first bone that actually is skinned or causes polygon deformation? Because typically with your skeleton, there'll be like a root bone that doesn't actually cause any deformation. We're looking for the first bone that's actually skinned, which is most often the pelvis. 
So what we can do is open up um, this guy. I'm just gonna click on the magnifying glass and that'll take us right to the skeletal mesh in here. And let's take a look at the skeleton. So pretty standard skeleton. Looks like, yeah, so we got root. This is not skinned, but then it goes pelvis, which I'm pretty certain is gonna be skinned here. So what you can do is you can right click, copy bone names. Let's go back to our uh, blueprint that we created for the actor. And I'm gonna go into the mocap actor component and tell it that the pelvis bone is named pelvis. So that's just copied and pasted from the other skeletal mesh. So we can leave all these other ones blank, but if we actually put in names here, it'll use that naming to find the closest tracker to that bone. So you'll get better results the more information you feed it, but otherwise it'll actually automatically find whatever's closest and give you a semi-decent result. All right, so uh, another thing that I added to the mocap actor component is this here, it's the thumb and finger bend direction. So let's look at our skeleton once more. Let's see, let's look at the index finger. Looks like it's over here. So it looks like it's actually using the Z axis to uh, bend and in the negative. So you see how um, this is a straightened finger and negative will be bent. So inside of our kind of mocap actor component, we can actually tell it which axis and if it's negative or positive. So I'm just putting negative one into each one of these because um, I'm pretty certain the thumb is going to be a negative Z as well. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, so that direction. You could actually even add like a bit of um, the Y in there as well, but I'm just going to leave it as just this axis. And so when the system sees that, it's actually going to try to set up this other control rig. So let's open up here. This is the finger control rig. And you can see it's taking our uh, kind of finger bend direction and feeding that information to this control rig. So if your fingers aren't named like this, this might not work. Um, because I'm using, I'm hard coding the values here for each finger. You'll just have to change the name. Um, so if you have a different thumb name, uh, just input those in here. So, yep, those are, that you can see, we've got the blue as the left hand and the red as the right hand. So. Quite a bit of information to feed in, but it could be useful for you if you have a different um, kind of bone structure for your fingers. All right, so that's actually pretty much all we need to do. Uh, I'm gonna get suited up and let's try it out. Let's actually motion capture this goblin. That's the fun part, right? Just do, let's do a, a little pre-flight test here. Just make sure we've got an actor They've got their specific VR uh, mocap unknown. This has been retargeted from the kind of base unknown animation blueprint, which is, again, because we have a different skeleton for the goblin than whatever I set up for the unknown actor type, that's what we have to retarget. And so we put that into the skeletal mesh. The skeletal mesh is actually facing in the X direction, which uh, you can see here X is this way. So that's the direction that they're facing. We've got the mocap actor component. They are the target. Um, we've got the unknown bone type selected, and we've told it that the first skinned bone, the one that we want the pelvis to be, is called pelvis. We found that on the skeleton here. Pelvis is... And that's great because it lines up. Um, I did hard code that the pelvis will control whatever that bone is, so... And then, but that gives you pretty much good results for any humanoid. And even, as you'll see later in the video, quadrupeds. So let's, uh, again, let's get suited up and test it out. Okay, so we've entered play mode and I'm gonna test out my inputs to see if things are working. Looks like they are. So I have the right trigger will make us bigger, left trigger will make us smaller. The system tries to automatically guess how tall you are compared to the actor and scale you. Um, but yeah, if you don't get inputs like here, I'm not actually getting inputs, make sure you click into the viewport. Uh, even though I have get mouse capture on play or whatever the setting is, it's for some reason 4.27. I have to click in every time, but you know, do that. Otherwise you won't get VR input. <laughs> I'm a goblin. Cool. Well, that's not great. So as you saw, it actually automatically grabbed a twist bone because that was what was closest to it. That's because we didn't specify which bones we wanted. So it looks like the naming of the bones is actually pretty similar to the UE4 mannequin. So I'm just gonna go in here, lower arm underscore L and R and then hand underscore L and then R.
Ta-da! So as you can see, now I'm a goblin. Um, more so than in real life. So anyways, that's how you use the system. I'm sorry that there's some additional steps where you have to create an animation blueprint, but I think that's just, um, that's just how it goes with different uh, skeletal meshes. So that's how the unknown body type works. Uh, I hope it helps you out with your projects. I think it's gonna be a great addition because I wanna do a lot of monsters. Um, the thing is it does crash quite a bit. Sometimes certain characters will shrink down. I get the best results on characters that are very close to the Unreal 4 mannequin type. Um, so if you can use that rig, I'd recommend it. Um, but yeah, if you want to watch me debug this in another video that's around 25 minutes where Unreal crashes on me probably 10 times, I have a kind of hidden link here. You can see kind of the debugging process I go through. I've worked on this thing for probably three weekends. I've lost three or four weekends instead of playing Psychonauts 2, which is what I really should have been doing. But um, yeah, uh, hope you liked it. hope this is helpful for you and look forward to more VR mocap updates in the future. Take care, everyone.